Welcome to the interior of my Toyota Hilux. I have purchased a new diagnostic machine. This is the Top Don Arte Diag 800BT. And it is a wireless uh, diagnostic machine. How cool is that? The diagnostic plug is stored inside in a poppy out pouchy thing. That is Star Trek. Oh, and I nearly dropped it. Oh, so I bought this on Amazon uh, for about 400 uh, UK pounds. It replaces some of, uh, no, some, no, it replaces all of my other diagnostic, not replaces, it replaces most of them. It actually just does away with a lot of them. And we'll have a look at them in the workshop in a minute. I'll go through my old collection of diagnostics and some other stuff I'm using. But I thought I would let you see uh, this one in uh, operation. So now let me um, fumble about under the dashboard until I find the diagnostic port and then work out which way around it is. I think that's the back. Is that the back? Oh, here we go for bent pins. Come on now. Come on, you son of a bitch. Don't make me go out in the rain. Nope, nope. Nope. Oh, this would be much easier if I could see. Ah, sod it. I'm going to get wet. BRB. Ah, oh, man, it's raining. Uh, it's right there. Ah, now I'm all wet. Anyway, I don't know if you can see, but it's got a green light on it. Ah, so, well, we basically just press scan. Oh, also helps to turn the ignition on. I keep doing that. I always forget to turn the ignition on and uh, we can press auto search uh, radio go away what we'll do now is uh, look at the ECU and see if we can find a VIN number hopefully please find the VIN number do not make me type it or I will I, will, I, saw it, I swear to god I will just go and uh, fail to find VIN code so this is one of these cars that doesn't tell you the VIN code from the... I'm not typing in. I, I am... Yes, I am quite sure. So, thankfully... Oh, we'll just go Mitsubishi. It's not a Mitsubishi. Moron Satoa. Gee. I know. Oh, right, Toyota. So it's now currently connecting to the uh, OBD wireless Bluetooth device. Hopefully. Right, this is uh, probably Europe. Probably. Thankfully, there's not a lot we can get wrong. We can, you know, if you pick the wrong thing, it just probably won't connect. Or sometimes it connects and bits are missing, and then you know you've picked the wrong one. But we'll let it do its uh, diagnostics and see what it finds, and hopefully it'll actually connect to the it is a Hilux. So I read enough of the ECU that time. Mine's uh, 1505 to 18, is it? Or is it that one? 07, I think it's that one. Uh, with vehicle stability control. 2011, that's uh, close enough. Blah, 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 if communication, blah, blah, blah. I know it says to, but we're not the newest high luck. Right, go on then. Health report. Do the scanny thing. Do 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 do. I might speed this up. Will it find any faults? I hope not, because there's no lights in the dashboard. Airbag. Huh? Okay, I've got three airbag errors. Shall we see what they are? This system control. Wait. Did I miss? I think I missed. Yeah. Can I, oh, sorry. I put the uh, errors to the top. This the ECU controls the. I know what it does. Can you go in, please, and read the fault codes? Open in driver's squib circuit history. Open inside driver's squib circuit. History. Open in squib side. Uh. So according to that, all the airbags have gone off. They haven't. 
I might have unplugged them at some point when I was uh, fitting my new hedge unit, but that's better. Right, you want to try again? Hey, no airbags because they've not set them off, you just unplugged things. It's good that it stored it, but it wasn't on the dashboard because it knew it wasn't current. Oh, very good. Uh, right, so that's uh, the diagnostic part. Now, the, the other good bit is uh, live live data. I always enjoy a bit of live data. Read data streams. Data streams always good. What have we got? Air conditioning, air conditioning, accelerator, accelerator position. Does that mean I, well, I'll be able to see it? Like, so we can bring it up. Accelerator position, nothing. Accelerator position. Oh, nearly 100% off. Oh. Oh, wow, it's, that's got a real slow bleed down. That's weird. And it crashed! So there you go. We actually got a crash on, on camera. Nice. That's impressive. I wonder if that means we chose the wrong. Zero. Lots. None. Lots. None. Lots. None. Yeah, that works. Uh... So, kind of picked our rubbishy car. Are you sure you want to exit? Yes. And I like this, this this next bit. When it beeps loudly and then reminds you to not forget the Bluetooth thing you've got plugged into the car. Otherwise you'll walk away and you won't have any more adapters in your adapter. So let's go back out to the main menu. So, that was the scan button. That does your... Well, as you saw, it does the scanning and reading of fault code and stuff. So ma the maintenance and service bit is the bit where all the uh, brake bleeding, programming in things, regenerate DPF, that kind of stuff. Put, if you put a new battery in the cars that need them to tell, you need to tell the car that you've put a new battery in it, that kind of thing. Uh, EGR cleaning, all that kind of stuff. Coding keys. All those things are in there. Uh, which none of them will work on this truck because there's no thing to oil th the oil bit is where you usually reset service indicators but on almost all of the cars I've tried the reset the service indicator doesn't usually work let's try it going in T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T T Let's see. Some of them, what it does, if it can't do it, it'll tell you on screen how to reset it, which button combination you have to press to uh, reset it, which, there you go, so manual reset, so it doesn't know how to do titles. This function is a manual reset mode. Yeah. Is Hilux even in this? Prius? <laughs> ah, other. Other, other. Turn on ignition, make sure the auto trip, yeah, turn the ignition key to the off, reading shown, turn it on, turn it off, five seconds, blah, 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 yeah, that's exactly what it is, and that's exactly what it tells you the to tool manual. So, at least it tells you the manual way of doing it, if it doesn't understand how to, if, it not, if, it's, if it's not programmed to do a thing. The other nice thing about this is, it stores, like, previous uh, diagnostics that you've run, if you actually tell it to store them, that is. So I've got a 2004 uh, Land Rover Freelander, an old Audi, a Mitsubishi, because you can store the reports and generate PDFs for them, because it's always nice to send them to people. Because you could, though also the thing is you can do reports and it gives you a QR code and you can set, you can scan the QR code with your phone and it opens a web page with the, the diagnostic report on it, or you can email it or create a PDF, etc. Which is nice, because then later on the person's going, uh, what was that diagnosed? What did you say was wrong with my car? And like, I literally sent you an email with the diagnostics in it. Not gonna lie, repair info is mostly not there, apart from an OBD fault code library, but that's just Google, to be fair. And the rest of the stuff isn't even, there's not much there. It's, hello? Hello, internet? You can you can look, but it's just basic. This just tells you what vehicles are covered by the system. 
Uh, yeah, there's not a lot. Oh, let's go to learning. I bet this says coming soon. Yeah, that doesn't help us at all. None of that is any use. Nice thing about this is when it actually gets updates, they're they're all there. Like we just press update, and it will go and get all of the updates for whatever software needs updated. Mercedes Benz, Porsche, see it. What we got? Steering angle resets, sunroofs, uh, tire pressure monitor reset. It'll do the thing. It'll download it, install it. Don't have to worry about it. And there's a separate. Uh, update for updating the in the actual operating system itself. All mine are up to date at the moment, but all the updates are there. It installs uh, flawlessly and has space for all of them. Unlike another uh, diagnostic that we will see in a moment in the workshop. So that was us doing the uh, car portion of the RT Dag 800 BT. Allow me to remember to pull the thing out of the. OBD port and put it back in its holder so we have not forgotten it. Turn ignition off, save my battery. Right, let us now return back into the workshop and we'll have a bit more of a discussion. What made me pick the top done? So, did I say that this is £400 or near enough £400 UK pounds? Why did I pick this? So, this is kind of middly range. You've got options of like uh, Bosch or your snap-ons which run into the thousands, thousands of pounds but then again I'm only we'll say middly casual semi enthusiastic DIY uh, user so I don't really want to spend thousands of pounds on my diagnostics even though let me just those diagnostics are absolutely worth every penny if you're using them to make a living. If you're using them to make a living, I would highly recommend spending the money and getting the top end gear. Now, previous to the, the top done, I purchased a launch machine, a CRP429C. This is a piece of shit. Why is it a piece of shit, David? So, what I didn't realise when I bought it was, this requires you to pay for annual updates. You get one year of free updates, and then after your year, you have to give launch another £50 every year. They give you a code, you put it in, and lets you update the newest version of the software. At the time of buying this, they're doing a free lifetime updates for this unit. So if you buy it, by, well, I presume we're still doing it just now. But if you buy this, you'll get free updates for the lifetime of the unit. That's not so much. And the second thing is, even once you've bought your license to get all your updates, it doesn't have enough capacity to store all the updates. So let's, I don't know how many cars there are in its thing. But, I don't know, let's just say there's 30... Uh, types of car that it can do, it doesn't have the memory inside to store all the updates. So I'll get like, so you have to choose which cars you want to keep diagnostic data for, or you have to have your phone and tether it the whole time, and then, you know, get out there and go, oh, it's that thing, and then you actually have to re-update re on the fly while you're there, hoping you've got mobile network. Now it's not a terrible diagnostic machine, it does the job of the diagnostics but having to pay them every year for updates for a not a great machine like if this was a Bosch or a Snap-on and it did everything I wouldn't mind paying the updates but it doesn't, it only does some of the you know things it can do I also don't like its charger, it, for charging it uses a you know, a, a, a barrel style connector and a US, USB to barrel. So, if you lose this, you're going to have to buy a special cable to connect it. Whereas this, this is just plain old fashioned USB C. It's got a USB C for charging it and a USB port that you can plug things into to run, like your phone, etc. So, that was that's the other biggish diagnostics I've got. Uh, the other two I've got are your absolute. Basic launch, generic, 
uh, code reader, like you get these in like Lidl and Aldi for a tenner. And it, that, that does the thing it's supposed to do. It reads and erases engine codes. That's all these can do is engine. They can't do ABS or the airbags. These are only for the engine. And that does what it's supposed to do. Topped on uh, a, a long time ago now, a while, a lot, I don't even know when. It's so far back in the past, I'd have to go and look. They sent us this one to review at some point. And again, this is just a generic code reader. Bit of a bigger screen than the uh, launch one. But it does basically the same job of reading engine codes. Can't do ABS or airbags, only, only engine. And the thing I didn't like about this one was le left and right are in the right place, but I don't like up and downs being, I like, just just make it four. Like, left, right, up, down. So I don't have to think about which way's up and which way's down. That's, uh, nah, nah. And for everything else, there's a laptop with Bagcom and a Subaru one and a Toyota TechStream compatible TechStream and some other things, but we, we don't. We don't. We, we only use that if we really, really have to. Most of the time, I use a diagnostic machine for winding back electric handbrakes to do discs and pads on the rear. That, that's almost its number one job when I pull it out, is pressing the buttons to make the electric handbrake go and wind back so you can change the pads and discs and then and wind them back out again. That's mostly it. That's mostly its job. And general diagnostics uh, of uh, troubleshooting, etc, etc. So, what I'm going to do is, since we've we've had contact from Top Don previously when they sent us that, and now I've bought this one and it works and I'm actually happy with it, I'm going to go and email Top Don and see if they'll give us a discount code. Because we're not a big channel, but we're not... A small channel either. We've got, you know, a good a, a good subscriber base that might be interested in this. So I'll see if they'll give us a code. And if they do give us a code, a discount code or whatever, a link or thing, whatever how it works, I will put it down in the description and you can use it if you want to buy one of these. As I say, it is £400. That is, it is quite a lot of money. But if you can get it with the free lifetime updates, then that's probably a bargain. Because as I say, this when I bought it was 250 and then I spent £50 the next year to do the update. So I'm up to 300 now. So I'd have to spend £50 every year to keep updating the launch. Whereas if I, could, if I had known, or at the time if this had existed, I would have just bought this once and then kept going with the updates, etc. to uh, keep it refreshed and updated with all the latest uh, data, etc. for the car ECUs and being able to connect to it. So if you have any questions, comments, etc, etc, about this or diagnostic -y, equipment -y stuff -y type stuff that I have, I have shown, uh, just leave a comment down below and also comment if you hate electric handbrakes as much as I do. Thanks for watching!